I'll introduce you to Sancho. So I met Sancho at um, at Ignite uh, in London and uh, just couldn't stop looking at what it was he had on his screen. Uh, Sancho is an amazing personality, a fantastic presenter, um, and I was really delighted with what he's come up with because genuinely will save um, a great deal of time for every Power App developer on the planet. And that can't be said about very many people. Plus he likes cats and I have a cat, so it's all good. <laughs> so uh, let me again, just quickly introduce you Sancho and let you take over and, uh, and tell us all about your solution. Okay, so um, my name is Sancho and I develop Power Platform and a bunch of other different solutions at um, Pinnacle Group, but primarily focused on Power Platform. I don't make it for other companies, it's just building internally. Um, I started my journey on the Power Platform in August 2018, and I first saw a video of Martin Lee and of Samit Saini around August 2018, and then within a month of that I had pushed to the company that I wanted to do this full time and would they open up a role for me? And they did. And then a couple months later, um, lots of help on the community forums and I was promoted to super user on the community forums. And then a few more months after that, um, Microsoft picked up on all the huge number of apps and other solutions I was creating within the company and nominated me to be one of the Power Apps champs. So that was pretty cool. And then very recently, like Sharon, I was made MVP. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, so my story sort of is a bit emotional, I guess, to start. And that is um, the whole reason I wanted to get into all of this was that um, I wanted to support my partner better and you know make our lives a lot better. And she has a spinal injury and autoimmune disease. And I didn't really have the time to spend years learning the traditional languages and, and you know making my way up the ladder slowly starting right at the bottom again I, I just i couldn't afford that so with this and with the power platform within a month i was able to build a production app that you know just the company was just amazed at whereas you know it would have taken me years to do a similar sort of thing if i was doing like i said learning c sharp which which i am coincidentally learning on the side but um this this enabled things a lot quicker. So um, the problem we're facing right now with Power Apps is is there's there's some things that are time consuming where they shouldn't be, and there's an, a minor accessibility issue. So obviously the Power Platform itself is hugely accessible, um, especially Power Apps. You know your your ARIA principles. And all that are, are handled by the platform. All you really have to do is fill in a hint text here and a tab order there, and the whole thing sorts itself out for you. Um, but what it doesn't do is low vision and um, color blindness. So, thing is, I wanted that feature to be there by default, and I wanted to save people a whole bunch of time. So, I was spending at least an hour a week doing this but let's say let's say I spent one hour in my entire career changing the control properties of controls to different colors and the, the fills and the hover fill and hover color hover all, all of those settings if I just only spent one hour in my entire career doing that and there are over two and a half million power app developers then that essentially equates out to 285 years worth of time that is being spent by the community just on changing these colors and that is insane. So I thought there has to be a better way to do it and there is. So if we all spent just one hour a week like I do changing these properties, that's 13,680 years of time we spend collectively every year, which is just, wow. So there had to be a better way to do it, and there definitely is. So let's go through the normal experience. What you do normally 
you know, you create your power app, you create a button maybe and a, a drop down and then you set the properties. So you go to your color and your fill and the border color and pressed color, pressed hover, pressed border color, hover color, hover fill. Oh, it's, just, it's just for every single object you have to do that and you set it to something and then you brand it according to your company's requirements, which OK, fair enough. But if you want to then enable accessibility, so for example, you want um, high contrast mode to be available by default, you have to program that in. So for example, all I've got here is on the on start of this little app, it's setting a default color and a default text. And then on the button, I have set the fill to be that color and the text should be my text color one. Okay, so. All I got these buttons doing is just changing it to their color and their text. So if I click through these and then black and white would be our high contrast mode. But the problem being is now this becomes a copy paste effort. So you have to then teach people to copy paste items. So what people are traditionally are doing at the moment is you have a button like this. You want to put it in a new screen. You paste it in there and then you do whatever you need to do with it. But the problem is um, your entry level developers they're probably not going to do that. They're just going to go insert button. And all that work and time is just going to be replicated again and they're going to change that to whatever property and change the color. And so the whole process is just a massive waste of time. I mean, just just making this little setup here took me like 20 minutes. I mean, that's that's crazy. So especially because of drop downs, drop downs have a phenomenal number of um, properties that you can change for color. So, you know, you got color selection, chevron, um, whether the chevron's enabled or disabled, hover, um, whether it's pressed, and all of those then need to be changed for every single one of those. So, what I did was I created a template that sort of provides that functionality out of the box. So, if I just open up my branding template. So I'll have, I've got links for all of this afterwards. We'll cover that at the end. But um, the idea was, OK, if I insert a new screen. And pop in a few items. And let's get a. Fan input and a drop down. And a date picker. So now standard procedure would be OK, we have to go in and change all these properties and change all the colors, make it match to our company branding. So that's obviously a huge time suck. So I think it's good now to explain what situation I was in. So the company I work for originally had seven different brands, each with its own logo, its own set of four different colors and and various other little niche requirements. So what I had was Every time someone loaded into the app, it determined what domain they had logged in from and then rebranded the app accordingly. But to do that, originally I did what I showed earlier. I had a whole bunch of items where I had manually set each individual property and it just was driving me mad. So the whole idea is if I, I've just inserted all these items, if I go through to this theme palette and pop in my Accessibility theme, hit set theme, go back to the screen and we're done. That is how it should be. That is exactly how the experience should be. You should just be able to out of the box, click one button and the whole thing brands. So let me go back <laughs> and over a few things. So one thing, um, your pen input, pen inputs by default, stick to one color so you, you know you use it and you expect something like that fair enough and then date pickers date pickers are the bane of the current um, power apps control system because everybody wants the date pickers to be changeable they want this part over here to not be the default blue but as it turns out if you do an out of the box edit there is only color fill and border properties available to you so Effectively, everything that's not displayed on this front end, so this whole chart bit here, that that can't be branded. So even if you have, which would be the worst case scenario, if you have a red colored theme in your company branding, 
and then automatically whenever you, someone opens up a date picker that's going to sh show up as blue um, this is particularly bad in the case of if you're using um, forms every single date object that you use for the back end of a form is going to pull in one of these default date pickers so you'd have to then customize and, and change it every single time but if you uh, if you use the template and let's go back there done and the same applies i mean it's not just for um, black and white if i choose one of my funkier themes so if we go to purple note that everything is themed according to that it's not just the the tops and bottoms it's the actual selector the okay and the cancel so that is something you just cannot do in the current power apps without really digging into the the back end which i will show in a moment but it's 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 not something you can do out the box and then once you're in a dark theme i mentioned the pen input before so it should automatically do this and detect when you're in a dark or a light theme and then just change the pen according to what you're doing. So that's definitely not standard and I didn't do any fun fancy code before this. It's all embedded in the back of the app. So another thing that um, comes up quite often is uh, the charts. So if I, let's drop back to the standard Microsoft theme and go back to charts. So everyone knows these charts, you've all seen them in the apps. Now, changing them or changing their colors, if you went back a year, you weren't actually able to do that properly. Um, now they've got an array of colors that you can manually set. Um, but then again, entry level makers, first of all, you've got to get them to understand arrays, and then you've got to get them to understand um, how to not mix different types of enumerated colors versus RGBA versus hex. So the whole thing is just a little bit confusing for anyone who's just jumping in, and it should be as easy as Okay, I click this color, change that to purple. It set chart colors and it's done. And then the same applies if I insert a new chart. Done. Just just there by default. That that is how it should be. All of these things should just be default functions. So I'm trying to provide for everyone else to be able to do this out of the box without having to waste all this time configuring all of it. Just just let, let, don't reinvent the wheel, take what I've built and, and make it your own. So one of the other things I put inside here was, um, so when new makers come across Power Apps, they obviously, you know, all, all the Power Apps in general start looking very samey. And I wanted to give a few examples of how to, to have different presentations using the three different colors. So what I've done with all this theming is I use a, a primary, a secondary and a tertiary color and then text colors to complement each of those. So if I go and look in my apps on start. Um, I've commented it thoroughly. There is information here that you just. You really need to read through this, but equally if you're comfortable with power apps, you don't. So all I'm doing when the app starts is setting these three primary colors and their complementary text values and then a default label color which applies to the new screens and a dark mode so if I look at I mentioned the new screen so when you pop in a new screen um, your entry level makers they're going to be using these because it's the same as using any other template um, like uh, Chris mentioned use the power apps templates that exist I agree with that and then make them your own don't use their methods and their, their their thought processes to create your own apps and the same with the insert screens you can tweak these to do whatever you want but again if you're going to be making them accessible you want them to be that way by default so if i go and insert a success screen okay it's blue but i should now just be able to go to my theme pop in accessibility mode done <laughs> and that that is how it should be you should just and, and even if i've switched to another theme now if i pop in the tutorial screen i should just expect it to automatically be like that and i really think that if people want to save a lot of time this is the way to go about it because you know i spent a lot of time building this sure 
but the idea was to save the larger community reams of time in terms of having to configure things and especially if you're not doing like really really complex apps i mean if you're just doing lots of small medium like quick win apps you want to use something like this to make your quick wins even quicker so so yeah i was talking about the uh different menu examples so let me pop back to default so i've got these menu and gallery examples so what I wanted to do was show that your galleries don't have to just look like the default galleries you see, because you see a lot of that on, on the sort of entry level makers, because they just want to make something that does the function, whereas something like the visual side of it, that takes a bit longer to figure out and, and do. So I figured I would give some examples here. So we've got it doing um, a pop effect. We've got the highlight of each item showing as you hover over. And when you choose one, it flips and shows the detail of that specific item. And then if I choose to edit that, you can have logic prompted that then, you know, does your edit item action or navigates you somewhere else. So, so how did I get it to do that action? Because if we look on the on select of this, all I'm doing is selecting the parent item of this gallery and then selecting this item here, which is, if I expand out that, which is just a button. So what I've done is had a whole bunch of logic pushed into buttons. So if I go to my admin screen and turn on the hidden developer things, catchy name, <laughs> then we see overlaid that I've actually taken the logic that you'd normally find inside all the different parts of the app and put them inside of buttons. And then the button uses conditional logic to determine what it's doing. So the idea being is that you want you really want your 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 code to be contained in one location because one of the things I've found, especially now that I'm looking back and re-editing some of my apps from six months ago, is if if I really don't remember where I put that one function, I waste so much time digging through and figuring out. Was it inside the first gallery? Was it inside this other button? I could have sworn there was somewhere I put this. And all that time digging around looking for the logic of something is, is just wasted time. So the concept is you, you have an overlay screen filled with buttons that perform functions, or you can do the similar sort of thing with um, toggles. That's the other um, popular method of doing this right now. Buttons are easier, but toggles are also possible and can be done to other screens. So you have this overlay um, and when you run it, it does the same thing as if you'd click the edit button because that's all the edit button is doing is it's just selecting that button. So if I go back here. So I wanted to make the, the menus as well easy to edit and easy to add things to. So it's really just a case of looking at the app on start and Let's go down and find that. So here we have, I'll just talk you through this quickly. Here we have the setting of the default theme as you load the app. Here we have setting of the chart colors, which I've just set to the different boxes fill colors. And then here we have creating the different themes. So if you wanted to add your own theme, I've got a nice little example here. You just copy paste that take out the comments and insert your colors. Or if you want to, you could just copy paste one of these examples and pop it in there and call it whatever you want. Test theme. And let's give it some really bizarre colors. To start and let's run on start. And we go back to our theme palette. There we go. So that, that was how easy it is to add a theme. I mean, it's a horrific theme. Don't use this color, <laughs> but uh, th that is how easy it is. And then the same thing applies to the menus. So if I go back to the on start and go down. So here we've got our themes. And then below that we have our menu. So it's just a small collection with three simple properties, a name, a tool pit, tip, and an icon. So if we wanted to add an additional to this um, menu over here, we could just copy paste one of these 
and call it under give it a icon and then we run our on start and there it is so what i've also done is in the formulas for this i've done the centering and spacing and padding of this so that it will work out depending on how many items you've got um, in your menu that it'll just automatically do it all for you so you just enter it in like that and then all you need to do is change what happens when you click it and that is then done using those buttons so if i go through and look at this um, menu item selected button, which is the hidden developer logic we saw earlier. We've got if the selected menu icon is called home, the name, then do something. So we just add another one here that says if it's called calendar, then I success. And we should now be able to click that. There we go. So just add in the item in the on start, add a bit of logic to the button, and you're good to go. Whereas normally you'd be building all of that from scratch. So I wanted to kind of help people get away from that and, and focus more on building these cool things. So the way I built these galleries is literally just using the three different colors. So the background is obviously the tertiary color. Your meds are the, um, is a, a hover fill label over here which just has the background fill of the mid and then the text are depending on whether the item is selected or not they choose the default text color for that range of color or the one for the highlighted range of color so what we've got now in the second example is i've just split the screen out so that you don't have to navigate away or have to flip over as you select each one it just pops over and changes it here and then the same thing with the edit we've got another edit running and it uses the same menu from that previous screen because it all just uses a collection so you could literally just take this whole menu and copy paste it onto a new screen and then just make sure it's working on the select item so the select item is that hidden developer button and all it's trying to do is say, OK, I, in order for this menu to run, I need a button that does that running. So you just copy it off from here. And then. Change it to it should be underscore one, because that's how Power Apps by default renames anything that's the same name with underscore one on the end. So there we go. And now that should. Yeah, that should work. So. Again, I'm trying to make it as easy as possible to, to copy across these items. So when I built this, just for the record, when I built this, um, components weren't GA yet. <laughs> so next iteration of this will have um, all of these items in components because that makes it a lot more easy to, to distribute it amongst your, your organization. So in the third example I gave here, I wanted to do, let's just allow that to run once. Um, I wanted to do something slightly different, and that was to have a variable height gallery and a menu with multiple items that could have static colors set. So with the variable height gallery, it's just a, a case of if this item is selected, then make the height a certain height. So every time it just changes between these, we make it a certain height, we change the picture and the title to a small size and we display a bit of description text and this is the same sort of concept as the split screen we don't want the user to navigate away if it's not necessary if we're just doing like a browsing catalog or something like that we don't want if they're not, if they're not going to edit it don't have an edit don't have all these additional screens just have something where you can have them pick through and see further detail so on the menu side let's look at the on start So we have menu number one, which is the first two screens menu. And then here's menu number two. Now I've got a description there explaining exactly why I've gone ahead and done different colors. So the idea was I took 
all I did was I copy pasted this whole menu collection and then added three other properties, four other properties, one for the icon color, the background, the icon when hovered and the hover background. And that way, when I hover on certain items like these, you can see that one's highlighting gray, that one's highlighting blue, and this one highlights green, as opposed to them all highlight, highlighting a standard color for the gallery. The other way was, um, the other thing was, I wanted this um, save button, for example, to always be gray and, I mean, green. So it was easy enough to set that using this new collection of items. And you can do the same sort of thing just by tweaking this. You can make a rainbow menu using this very easily. Um, so there's a bit of an explanation here, and that is, I tried to give a bit of an explanation on how RGBA works, how hex values for colors work, and then the enumerated colors, which it turns out you can't um, compare them. So you can't do is white equal to RGBA 255, 255, 255. If you try to compare them, it says they're they're incomparable. So worth noting that, but in case of uh, in the case of the save button, all I did was make the background a green color, the hover color a different color, and the same with the hover background. And then I combined all three of these options to show that you don't have to have everything just RGBA or everything just enumerated colors or everything just hex values. You can chop and change them as you want within the app. And as long as you aren't trying to compare them to each other, you're good to go. So using this, you can build things really, really quickly. I mean, this, this theme palette, for example, you don't even have to have this. All this is doing, this set theme button is just doing set and then those colors I mentioned at the, at the on start to this selected gallery item, because all this theme palette is, is a gallery of items. So it's just taking this item dot and then primary color, secondary color, tertiary color, and then applying them to those default variables. So if you wanted to, for example, you don't want, you just want your company brand and you want accessibility mode. All you have to do is set your company brand as the default in the app on start here using those three colors and then have a button like an like an eye button that just shows an eyeball and when you click that it flips to the high contrast theme by just taking the colors for this high contrast theme which you can find in the app on start over here for monochrome dock and setting those primary colors to these values and that's it then, then from there you just build a normal app because after that everything you build by default using these insert controls whether it's you know whether it's a, a new screen or whether it's a, a menu or whether it's a, a button or a list box or a checkbox radio all of these just come out by default now as branded. So as soon as we set to a different theme and go back there, they're just done. <laughs> like you, you can't get any easier than that. So while you might decide, okay, I, I don't really know what colors I'm gonna use. What I wanted to do is give you an easy way to test that. So there's actually a screen here for testing themes. So if we decide these are our primary colors, or we decide we're going to make that primary color. I wanted a bit of purple there, and I want, uh, let's go with a dark blue there. Now we can see straight away, or maybe we can't if you're not aware of this, but that is not an accessible match between the text color and the background color. And how do I know this? Lots of experience, but if you want to check it, you can use the WCAG color checker and you just enter in your background color or your foreground color together and as soon as you can see what lightness they are you can see there that the tests along the bottom there are failing as soon as I have a contrast ratio that doesn't meet the international guidelines for contrast for accessibility so I've got a link for this later don't worry about it I'll, I'll paste that in the end so what we want is to have that text color be accessible. So the contrast ratio has to be enough. So that looks good. 
And if I just go and set theme, it'll use all these items on the screen as a test. I mean, and the rest of the app, but this just makes it really easy to see as you're playing around with it, what the colors will be that you're trying out. So I think, okay, that blue is not going to work. Um, I actually want a, a sort of medium pink. And I'll try that out. Yeah, that's looking a bit better. Uh, my, my primaries aren't great though. I'm going to make that a very light pink. Uh, lighter. There we go. And set theme on that. There we go. That's all right. And if I go now check all my other screens, these will now show the different settings that I've applied for that. So that is all <laughs> crazy because how did I do all of that? <laughs> so it turns out um, that .ms app files are actually zip files. Um, and I found that out by accident because I was looking at an MS app I had built and I right clicked on it and I saw seven zip option there. And I was like, well, mm, that's interesting. And so you can actually open it up and it's an archive. Now, the way I figured out how to do the theming is a little bit more advanced than that. So I'm going to open up this one as well. And what happened was um, Power Apps has an unofficial tool released by the Power Apps team called the theme editor. So if I open that up for you. So what this does is allows you to do similar to what I've done, except they've got way too many colors and nobody has time for that. So <laughs> you, you set your colors one through 10 and every other color here, and then it will display to you exactly what you're, you've chosen there. So let's pop that in there. It shows it in the demo screen and then you would go save and that then saves a .ms app. So I was thinking, well, if they're able to do that programmatically, there must be something inside the file that they're changing, which allows them to do that. So I did. I took a look around and it turns out there is. So if I pull these up, so this one on the left here, that is a blank power app that was pulled from the theme editor. And this one on the right here is a blank power app where I saved it directly from the portal. I went new app blank and saved it. So you can see there's a completely different structure between the two, but something I did notice when I was going through is in the references folder there, there is this themes.json and in that one there is this themes.json and they are different sizes. And I took a look inside. Now your default blank power app from the theme generator. This is what the themes look like by default. It's a mess. Um, if you have Visual Studio Code, which I highly recommend you use when developing um, power apps because, excuse me, if you save the um, code you're writing inside an app, so like you take your entire on start and save it using Visual Studio Code as a C sharp file, a .cs, the um, format and structure is, is almost identical. I mean, you're not going to be able to run it, but it will be able to identify that this is a function. This is a variable. This is a, a number. These are operators, all that kind of stuff. So it, it helps a lot um, with developing. So if I use something that you can also get for Visual Studio Code, which I think is now actually part of the editor, but anyway, um, you use Beautify and it will automatically format JSON files for you and amongst various other types and formats. So we can see in here your default theme. So I was like, mm, they've got a way to change the default theme. And I saw they changed primary color one, primary color two, primary color three. And if we then search for primary color three in the rest of this file, we can see the first occurrence is in the cancel button as the fill for it. So that got me thinking, okay, so these cancel button, these are all the default controls in Power Apps. So if I go, let's go find um, button, go a few up. Let's go right to the top. And find button. There we go. Default button style. So this 
set of properties here defines what the default button is when you insert it inside a power app. So it's got all these different variables like the color, the border, the border radius, the thickness, everything. Now, while you can do all of those settings, I don't recommend it, mostly because it becomes too time consuming. Um, my original version of this template actually had every single property, but who has time to change 57 properties and colors and just to build a simple app? So I wanted to simplify it to just these three. So you could, for example, if you want the border color by, to by default be something else, you could create a new one. So let's say we want um, in a default button, we want the fill color to be our color. Now it's looking at palette dot our color. Palette, although it doesn't doesn't explicitly say it, is the default theme along the top here. So it's got palette there. And if we want to add in another one, let's copy paste that. Our color. And then we can set it to whatever value we want, whether it be RGBA or a um, color value for hex or just um, black for a numerated color. So unfortunately, that the problem with the theme editor and with all the other current ways of theming power apps is they're static. So once you've set this our color to that value, you can't change it. It's not going to in, in the app. It's not going to show the variable our color. It's going to show RGBA 106. Da, 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 da. So I wanted to figure out a way to get it to show variables instead. And what I did was it was actually by accident. I wanted to put T for text and call this um, text color one. And then have it um, look in the app and go if this thing's text value is text color one then set the fill to red or whatever but it turns out if i um save this uh, let's go to uh, there and if i um import this as part of the file power apps interpreted that t as a variable so it was like oh my gosh i've just done something that no one else has been able to do by having it interpret variables before the app has even started up on the default controls so let's go and do a quick demo of that so if i am um, i take out this blank power app over here and extract it to that folder then here is the themes.json file that I just edited and I'm going to put that in here and overwrite it. Now what I've got in my um, in the uh, post on the Power Apps community forums for this template, I've got a link to my GitHub which doesn't have a lot on it to be honest, but it does have this build a folder PowerShell script um, which is really, really, really simple. And thank you to Gabbers on the forum for showing me this. But if I um, open this with code, it's literally just a two liner. Um, the one line is really just getting the name into a variable. Then it's using the compress archive function and then renaming it from a dot zip to a dot MS app. Now, the reason why we do that instead of using zip is um, some of the zip functions change the way um, folders and other things are stored. So when you import the app, it just fails. So this is the best way to do it. So we go into that folder we extracted, paste that PowerShell script, let's run it. What's the name of my app? Test color. It'll build me this .ms app. If I go back into Power Apps, and let's get create open and just browse for that file, test color. Now we only really affected a button. So when I insert this button, there should be an error because I haven't set the variable that it's assigned to. There we go. So if I look at this, it's looking, there we go. The fill is set to this value called text color one. 
So if I go into my app on start and go set text color one red and run my app on start. Uh, did I write that? Yeah, there we go. So that's it. Now I can have any new button that's inserted. Um, picking up these variables by default. So then obviously I did that for every control that there is in Power Apps, which is just way too many and there are so many properties. If I just go back to this themes.json and go to default button style, there's border color, radius, disabled colors, ah, thickness, color, disabled, hover. So I do not recommend <laughs> that you edit this yourself. If I um, if I spent all this time, you shouldn't have to. So take what I've put up onto the community forum, dissect it, do what you want with it, and then do it to your own app. So if you want to do it to your own app, you can save down your app locally, extract it, copy in my themes.json from the branding template app. And then once you open your app again, you'll need to set those primary colors on the on start of your app. And then you'll need to set any existing items to the branding colors because what happens is when you create a power app and you create objects these are technically static objects now they've been created with this value of fill is equal to something whether it be rgba or this variable so once you change the themes.json it's not going to go back and retrospectively change every single object in your app so you can do it to your own apps I'd more recommend you create new apps with it, but it is possible to do it to any existing apps you have. So the other thing I want to just mention now, I mentioned WCAG earlier, um, that is the color blindness simulator. So if I, for example, um, take this and do a quick print screen here. And color blindness simulator. So if you haven't, if you all haven't seen this before, please go have a look because if you build your apps with all sorts of funky colors that the contrast ratio is not correct or the colors don't match carefully, you're going to be excluding out a huge swathe of people who have low vision or color blindness. So if I now, this thing is so great because it supports copy paste, so I can just paste that in here and then test what my app would look like if I had various types of color blindness. So this way you can make sure that your app is always accessible to everyone. And I mean, I knew this would be the case, but as you can see, it's always accessible using the default themes I've created because I always make sure that the contrast ratio is correct. And I do that by using contrast checker. So one of the things I want to build into the next version of the branding template is an automatic checker. I want this theme tester to have another row beneath here that tells you what the WCAG rating is for the theme you're currently testing. So that that's going to be pretty cool. And then obviously it'll have components as well because now that those are GA, I think over this month, then you'll you'll be able to create components with these. So that gets a little bit more complicated, obviously, but it's definitely doable. So let me have a look. Are we doing on time? Oh yeah. <laughs> pretty good. Um, so that pretty much covers most of what I wanted to show. There's one or two smaller things. So I'm just going to skim through those. So I've got here a loading screen that starts with the app. And in this, I've got this little bit of um, text here, which is this background that I used is publicly, it's a public domain image. You can use it for free. There are loads and loads and loads of them that have Creative Commons zero licenses, and you can use them in any application you want, whether it be corporate, whether it be, you know, that they're, they're Creative Commons zero. So that's one thing, easy way to get nice background images. And another one um, is that when I load this app, if I go back to that loading screen, you'll see that it's fading into that app and then navigating. So the, the idea being that on your loading screen, you want degrees of um, setting the expectancy for your users. So there's the fading of the image in the background, which is just a um, transparency setting here. 
that is determined based on this timer running in the background, that same timer that runs this um, navigation loading bar. So the idea is your timer starts and those things start fading and loading. And when your timer starts, you start your app's data loading. And then you have two methods of navigating. The first one is during the on start, you have the data loaded and at the end of the data loading, you have navigate to your home screen. And then the second one is when the timer ends, navigate to your load screen. So that way it's whichever one of them finishes first. So either you, you give them a sort of five second wait and they get navigated to the home screen or your app data ends up loading in less than five seconds, for example, and then they'll think, oh great, it loaded faster than I expected it to. So it's about setting those expectations for the user. And then in the home screen, I've got another um, gallery menu here called screens navigation. All of it's contained in the app on start. So if you want to edit that, just go down to screens navigation menu, which is uh, over here. Screens navigation menu, bit of a description above it. Very easy. You want to add a new icon, just give it one of these. And then the on select again is just running a button. So it just, I mean, not running a button, it's just a navigate to and then the screen name. So that's really easy to modify and change. If I want to just add in one at the bottom here and call it uh, screen four, which is the one we did at the bottom there. And then screen is where it's going to navigate to. So screen four and icon dot, let's just pick a random one airplane. Now we run my on start. There we go. That's that's how easy it should be to just add an item. We click there and it goes to screen four. Magic. So um, if you have any questions, now would be the time. I'm just going to pop over to this and share some links. So link to my branding template on the Power Apps community forums. Take it, dissect it. It's free for use. Just do whatever you want with it. Just please try and save yourself some time because that is really the goal of all of this is to do things a bit quicker using either my template, the Microsoft templates, or any of the other um, apps and items shared in the Power Apps community forums because those are all free for use. Um, there's a link there to a recent blog post on Microsoft Power Apps official blog. Um, a link for generating random themes. If you can't come up with great colors and you're trying to make fiddle around, this thing literally has a button you click and it generates random good looking themes for you. And then obviously the WCAG contrast checker and the color blindness simulator that I showed earlier. Um, yeah, so thank you everyone for um, letting me speak today. This has been pretty, pretty cool to show you all. Thank you, Sancho. That's absolutely excellent. Um, I see you still have a, a bit of a thing for being on brand with the whole uh, Power Apps purple, or is that a personal preference? <laughs> I just, I really like purple. <laughs> You're in the right team. <laughs> for, for, for reference, those are not the Power Apps purples. Those are my individual purples I set up. <laughs> just, just. Sancho. Sancho purple, love it. I also like the concept of hidden developer things. Um, I live with one and, uh, and those exist. <laughs> Um, do you think this is something that um, Microsoft will eventually want to suck all of your code in themselves and they're going to put this inside the product? I think longer term, yes. I know in the, the release way of coming up, they've got advanced theming um, options coming, but uh, from what I gather, that's not what I've done here at all. But I think also because I know the team is more focused on um, functionality, which makes sense because yep. that's where the yep. greatest value is delivered. Um, this is probably not the top of their priorities, um, but they, they I did speak to them briefly about it and they really like what I've done. So I don't know how to take that, but I figure it's probably given them some ideas. So no job offer yet then. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> I mean, it's an absolutely excellent solution and, you know, it's fascinating to see the whole story behind it. So how you came about doing this yourself and wanting to make your own life easier. And then this fantastic, you know, because you're such a selfless guy, you know, putting this out there for everybody else in the community. You could have just made yourself a, a complete genius at making quick and, and beautiful apps. But no, you've shared it. So thank you from everybody uh, for doing that for us. Pleasure. Everyone needs to have this kind of thing. That's the thing. It's just 
like I say, it should it should be there already. So I'm just really helping people as a stopgap until it is. That's excellent. So what's next? Have you got your hearts out on doing something else tough in Power Apps or are you busy building apps? Um, there's two things. The one um, is obviously the next version of this, which I said is going to have this WCAG checker and a f components and a few other little things I haven't really figured out entirely yet. But the other thing I want to do is um, that theme editor that I showed earlier from the Power Apps team, they actually have the source online. So mm -hmm. the reason, one of the reasons I've been teaching myself C Sharp, I mean, there's two big reasons, but the one is that I want to be able to pick apart their app and make it do what my branding template does on other people's apps. So to save everyone the hassle of having to do it, I want to create a standalone executable that they can just open their .ms app, change a few colors, and it will run through and edit everything. It's and a then hybrid. Repackage Absolutely. it as a, an MS app again. Very cool. I look forward to seeing that. Um, again, can't thank you enough. There's absolutely fantastic stuff that you've shared. Um, I've put your, your details back up on the screen there so that people can see um, how to get into or oh, there's your, your profile there. Um, but, you know, definitely connect with this guy on Twitter. Uh, keep an eye on what he's doing because he's absolutely leading the way in some of this customization. So really, really pleased that you joined us today and managed to share that with everybody. I don't have any questions in the feed, um, but we're, we're kind of out of time anyway. So if anything does come in, if, if that's OK, we'll forward that to you. Yeah, of course. OK, um, and also we'll be putting this up on, on YouTube again, if that's OK with you and adding in your links there to your various resources. So really useful stuff. Thank you so much, Sancho. Brilliant. Thanks for having me. Um, so um, just to close then, uh, just a quick thank you to everybody who has made the time to attend this evening, to everybody who has uh, presented or taken part. Thank you to my brilliant team behind the scenes, making all of this come together, advertising the event and making sure that there's some content uh, for those of us in and around the Cambridge area and now in the world. Um, so thank you so much for joining. Um, thank you to the speakers for speaking. If you would like to speak at a future event, um, if you've got something that you would like to share that you've implemented that you think the group would really benefit from, please do get in touch with us. Um, we are at CAMS PPUG as well as hashtag CAMS PPUG. And if you could get social in the meantime and let us know what you enjoyed, what you'd like to see, uh, you know, these events are for you guys by you guys. So if there's something particular that you want us to talk about or you want us to get a session on, just let us know and we'll make that happen. So the next event is probably going to be around July time. Who knows whether that will be virtual or in person, um, but I really look forward to seeing all of you again sometime soon. Thanks so much for listening uh, and thank you Cambridge Power Platforms. <laughs>